Okay, 12.01, there we go. So welcome everyone. <clears throat> everyone here has been been here before, so I don't need to explain the point of this, this whole uh, 15 minutes here. So today's theme I was thinking about uh, is the, the following, this idea of saying yes when we actually mean no. And part of that came out of some coaching sessions that I've had in the last few days. And this is a, it's a theme that I'm very familiar with. And I thought it'd be interesting to use our, our focused attention skills to explore why do we say yes when we actually mean no or you know, what, what motivates that to get a bit of a more intimate understanding or relationship to that part of us that, that does this. So why do we do this? I think there's a, there's a continuum here and it ranges all the way from fear to a more, um, yeah, sort of a softer kind of you know, people pleasing energy fear. Certainly when we were kids, you know, how dare you say no, you know, if it came from our parents, if there's any kind of physical violence, um, or intimidation, emotional abuse makes, makes pretty good sense that we learn how to mask our no with a, kind of yes, just to make sure we don't, we don't actually get hurt. And then you fast forward and many of us, I think, find ourselves as grownups doing this thing called people pleasing. Oh, I don't want to say no, because I don't, I tell myself, I don't want to hurt someone's feelings or um, I don't want to be considered crass or somehow uh, obnoxious. And so I'm just going to say yes, when actually my, my authentic truth is to say, I don't, I don't want to be doing this. So we say yes, even though we actually mean no or are experiencing a no because we want to be good all the way to we want to avoid downright confrontation. And, you know, one of the reasons for, you know, why we want to learn how to say no is because it's actually a, a really fundamental way of honoring or respecting our authentic truth. And then the other peculiar thing that gets layered in here is this idea of you, we usually justify, feel this need to justify. The reason I'm saying no is because, oh, I don't want to be late for this, or I don't want to, you know, it's just not my thing or, you know, whatever it might be, rather than just being able to look someone in the eye and say, no, I don't want to do that. I appreciate that you do. I don't need to feel this need to justify and explain myself. And again, so there's a lot of interesting nuance going on there. And I think many of us find ourselves in, in, in our grown up selves still playing out these old scripts. Um, the one that, that I really noticed when I became a father and I take my kids to the, the playground and you'd be chatting with other parents and you'd say, Oh, what's your kid's name? And, you know, who are they? What do they do? And, and at some point would come some statement along the lines of, oh, he's a really good kid. And I realized after a while that that was basically code for he does what we think he ought to be doing. That's what makes a, you know, a child a good child, um, meaning staying out of trouble, getting good grades, sort of meeting our standards or our expectations of what, what he or she should be doing. And that constitutes good. And I think we pick that up as kids and then we find ourselves in the therapist's office going like, gosh, why, you know, why do I do that? Why do I keep saying yes when I actually mean no? Anyway, so I thought let's use our focused attention skills to explore this a little bit. So let's, let's start by getting grounded. So for me, that means closing my eyes. I just notice myself taking a deep breath. And then noticing the body in contact with the ground. I'm actually sitting on the ground. I'm cross-legged. Feeling this desire to literally ground or be in touch with the ground. Just, so just see what you're noticing about your body in contact the earth right here, right now. And you can play with intentionally exaggerating your breath. So taking a deep breath in, long exhale out. And, and the idea there is to really 
connect with, oh, right, this body that I inhabit is here right now, and I can feel it. Noticing that what has happened this morning is done. It's just a memory at this point. And what we anticipate is going to happen this afternoon is also similar to a memory, except it's in the future, so it's a kind of fantasy. Neither of which have anything to do with right here, right now. And it's, let's use our ability to time travel and think of a time when you felt some degree of pressure to say yes or to acquiesce or to conform, even though it's not really what you wanted to do deep down. It could be as mild as just smiling at someone, even though you didn't really feel like smiling saying, okay, sure, we can do that, even though it was not really something you wanted to do. All the way to the other extreme of a really intense no, you know, the sexual energy, be it some kind of negotiation, either in business or in your personal life, really felt like there was some pressure to have you do something that you didn't want to do. So going back into that, that memory, and then using your focused attention See if you can really zero in on what was actually going on for you. What was the story that your mind or your brain was feeding you about why you should say yes or why she, you should go along with this situation rather than express yourself in a real explicit no. Was it fear? Fear of being perceived as someone who's difficult. Fear of rejection, not belonging. Fear of being complicated, difficult. Fear of not being liked. Just stay focused on that narrative. What does it mean? What if, what if you aren't liked by this person? What if they perceive you as being difficult? Then what happens? Does it mean you get to avoid a, an uncomfortable confrontation? Is that the, the easy way out? And then notice what's the, what's the price you're paying for saying yes when you actually mean no. Where in your body does that discomfort or that a disconnect where does that register and how do you feel it
Noticing your throat. Head. Shoulders. Your chest, your belly. Where do you feel saying yes when you actually don't want to and there's an actual no that's alive for you? And notice whatever connection you can experience with your authentic truth. What would you rather have happen, but you're afraid to put on the table for whatever reason? What is your authentic truth in this moment? Can you embody your truth without justification, without the need to explain? Or protect the other person from your truth? And just say, no, I don't want to do that. That's not my truth. That doesn't feel right for me. Rather than, well, I'd rather not. Or maybe we could do something else. Now, I'm not saying that's always the most tactful or the smartest way to go about it, but there's something really powerful about connecting with a sense of what would it be like if I just said no and didn't explain any further, but I just said no. What comes up for me? Why is that scary? What's the resistance? It takes a lot of courage to, to live our nose. I know I bump into this pretty frequently. It helps being able to see it. Sometimes I only see it after the fact, which is always humbling. And there's always an opportunity, even after the fact, to go and make it right, to practice self-respect, authenticity, go back to someone and say, you know, I didn't realize this at the time. But actually, my answer is no, I don't want to do that. And go ahead and take a deep breath in. Long exhale out. Hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Deep inhale. Long exhale. And hold for five, four, Three, two, one, open your eyes. We're out of time, it's 12 15. Um, yeah, hope this, hope this is a helpful reminder to say no. And then if you find yourself stumbling or tripping on that, it's all good. Just explore it to figure out why, why you're saying yes when you actually mean no. Take care, everyone. I'll stick around for a few more minutes if anyone wants to connect.